Cool. So just to kind of jump in, I had a lot of questions about my Periscope yesterday, you guys, about kind of the top supplements and how to, a lot of questions about different supplements that are on the market, basically. And, um, and basically, one of the big questions I got was, what, what's the best type of protein to eat? There's a lot of different proteins on the market. And, you know, uh, if you're going to be picking a protein, I would say go with a protein isolate. So uh, a whey protein isolate, someone was asking if whey is good. Um, there's different types of protein and all uh, a whey protein isolate is you guys. So there's a lot of talk on, on isolate and casein protein. So if you've been paying attention to basically what the market's been talking about a lot, a lot of people are saying that casein protein is good for you at night. But however, people are running into issues with casein and I'll tell you why. So. Basically, when you look at milk protein, there's two different types of protein that go with it. And if you were to basically drink milk, you're getting the whey protein isolate as well as the casein together. Okay, so basically what a whey isolate is, is they're removing just the isolate. And that's why, obviously, it's called protein isolate. So that is the best, most bioavailable form of whey protein that you can get. It's actually really, really good. When you look at the actually how it's bioavailable to your body, it's actually better than eating eggs or anything like that. So now I'm not saying that go overboard and just eat protein shakes, but I'm saying if you are supplementing with protein shakes, a whey protein isolate is the better way to go. Um, a casein protein, uh, what research is showing you guys is it's causing a lot of gut issues with people. So, um, I stay away from it. I actually have kind of a little bit of a sensitivity to different types of like if I, I don't drink milk, I don't do any, I try to stay away from dairy just because it really does affect my gut. And the thing is too, is the difference is casein protein is basically a slower digesting protein. So it's a little bit harder for your body to break down. I believe that um, when a lot of these marketers are basically pushing products and they say, you know, that casein protein is really, really good for eating at night because it's slow digesting. And, and the truth is, you guys, is that, again, you're being marketed products. So you got to take that into account, right? And, and understand that a lot of people do have allergies to casein. So I just say stay away from it um, and stick with an, a whey isolate protein um, that's basically clean, you know, has little sugar, a uh, little carbohydrates, and you're going to be good on that. So another question I got yesterday was fat burners. You know, what do I think about fat burners? And in all honesty, um, I would also say stay away from fat burners um, because, and here's why, if you want a really awesome fat burner, you guys, stick to coffee. I mean, literally, if you can find a good organic coffee, the effects that you get with coffee for fat burning and increasing your metabolism are huge. And the number one difference is that you don't have the crash, right? With fat burners, here's the thing is you will lose weight, okay? They do, they do work, but here's the other issue is that you could be completely depleting your adrenal glands, completely. Um, and the problem with it is when you stop taking those fat burners, guess what? Your body is going to be affected that way. So when, if you stop taking the fat burners, all of a sudden your, meta your metabolism's out of whack, your adrenal glands are out of whack, and then you feel like you need to buy more fat burners to just feel normal. Whereas if you just get an organic coffee, you guys, it not only will wake you up, it has antioxidants in it, plus you're not gonna have the crash, and it's a great pre-workout too. So, which kind of brings me to another point. I had someone asking yesterday um, about what kind of pre-workouts would I recommend? Um, I don't really recommend them, you guys. <laughs> so the whole thing is there are a few ingredients. If you guys saw uh, my post on facebook.com forward slash Josh was eating fitness yesterday, I recommended all the supplements that basically um, are good quality base supplements for anyone adding into a workout routine. So the thing about it though is that with pre-workouts, why would you go spend 60, 70, $80 on a small bottle of pre-workout when you can just order the individual ingredients, spend the same amount of money, but you can make like 10 tubs of it. 
you know? So the thing is, is again, you gotta understand that when, you, when you're looking at pre-workouts, the base of most of the products are all the same. Um, you're, you're gonna typically have, you know, a creatine, um, your branch chain amino acids, arginine, citrulline, and all those ingredients can be bought really, really cheaply by themselves. And that's why I created the post yesterday uh, on my website to basically show you guys where you can find them for cheap and make your own stuff, you know? The key is don't overdo it on the pre-workouts. Again, if you just have a cup of coffee before a workout, that's awesome because the thing is, is people need to stop relying on supplements to increase their workouts. Because here's the thing, if you start taking a pre-workout and you start getting used to that pre-workout, and again, you're burning up your adrenal glands and you're probably taking in far too much caffeine, it can even affect your sleep, which sleeping, you guys, is one of the most anabolic things you can do. When you sleep, you literally are constantly releasing human growth hormone. That is the number one time when you are releasing growth hormone is while you sleep. So that could be a very simple fix for you is just get more sleep and your body will have far better effects than if you were taking some supplement, right? So again, you've got to remember that you're constantly being marketed products by these companies. They're telling you, you know, do more of this, do more of that. And the thing is, there's only a few supplements that I would recommend, but they are supplements, you guys. They are supplements to what you are doing. So if you're not using them as a supplement, if you're just taking stuff to try to get improvement, here's the thing. Slightly adjust your diet, you know, slightly adjust your workouts. Drink a little bit of coffee. Like simple things like this are going to give you far more effect than you will ever get with products. You know, I, I saw something the other day that someone was talking about, you know, test boosters. And I'm just like, you guys, these products may give you a little bit more energy at the time, but they're not going to give you the effects that you're seeing in these bullshit before and after photos. Like, come on. Like, people do not completely change their body in a matter of a couple of weeks, right? Even on my eight-week shred program, yeah, I've had clients that lose 15 pounds, 16 pounds in eight weeks, and that's healthy weight loss. But when you're talking about completely transforming your body in a matter of a couple of weeks, where you see people literally go from looking like they're 100 pounds overweight to you know being ripped with abs, come on. So just, just understand the marketing behind it. It is an industry. So the other thing is fish oil. Why is fish oil so important? Why are omega-3s so important, right? Um, you guys, we're, be, we're eating processed food all the time and there's, there's these processed oils that we're constantly eating and the truth is behind it is that we eat a lot of omega-6 and omega-9s because of these processed oils that are in foods. It completely throws our body out of, out of balance because we need omega-3s, okay? Omega-3s because when you think about it, you know, back in the day, we used to eat more fish. We used to eat more of these natural oils that our body truly needed. And what is it for? It's to, it's to cause, it's an anti-inflammatory. So it basically takes your body and gets rid of inflammation. What does inflammation cause? Everything negative in your body is caused by inflammation. Disease, sickness, literally everything. When you look at um, high blood pressure, when you look at, again, I, I'm not a doctor, you guys, and I'm not here to sit here and tell you to get off your blood pressure medication, but I will say I've had multiple clients that got off of blood pressure medication, that got off of these medications that their doctors were telling them they needed simply by introducing fish oil, a proper nutrition plan, and working out. And they've completely reversed the issues that they had. But it's because when you look at the nasty fucking food that people eat, it's causing major inflammation in your body. And that that is where all the issues come from, is inflammation. So fish oil, highly recommend. Um, Understand that fish oil, krill oil, they're kind of one of the same, you guys. It's the only difference is the type of fish that it's typically coming from. Fish oil can come from sardines. It can come from all sorts of stuff. So just understand it is night. It is better if you can find high quality fish oil versus, you know, just a, a base model fish oil. It is going to give you a little bit more um, of those omega-3s and a better quality of them. 
But for the most part, again, if it's something that you're not doing, <laughs> go to Costco and buy a big ass bottle of fish oil and just start taking it, you guys, because those are essential fats that you need to actually lose weight and reduce inflammation in your body. So again, that's a product that, I mean, I'll just recommend that to everybody because everybody really truly needs it. Um, the other thing, I talk on uh, branch chain amino acids all the time and I had some people ask some questions yesterday uh, about branch chain amino acids and understand you guys that branch chain amino acids, people were asking, you know, do I drink it before my workout, during my workout, after my workout, what's the deal? So. The truth is, is BCAAs are great before your workout, but also drink them throughout and, and, and after. What I do is I'll, I'll take a big water bottle, I'll put two scoops of BCAAs in it, I drink half of it before, and then I drink the rest throughout the workout. And that's pretty much it for, for the breakdown, you guys. I, had, I just had a lot of questions yesterday. Um, again, my name is Joshua Zitting from joshuazittingfit.com. Um, you can also, uh, if you check out my Facebook, I put up an article yesterday. It's facebook.com forward slash Joshua Zitting Fitness um, that basically broke down these uh, different supplements basically and where to find them at what I think is the best cost. So realizing that uh, certain products are like creatine, you can basically buy base creatine. Um, yeah, there's there's five, six different types of creatine that they're trying to put out on the market and some of them are probably a little bit better than others, but honestly, creatine again, you guys, is something that has to be built up in your system over time. It's not like caffeine, you can't just take it. Oh, another thing, just real quick before we finish this. Caffeine, do caffeine pills work? It's not the same, you guys. So understand that when I tell you drinking coffee is is awesome for caffeine and your metabolism. Realize that there's also antioxidants in coffee that are really, really good for your body. So I don't suggest just taking caffeine pills and some people don't like coffee, but if you could just have a small espresso or something, even before your workouts, you guys, it's so nice to have that little boost of energy. Plus you're not gonna have the major crash that you would with a lot of pre-workouts um, and it's more natural, but again, Try to stick to organic coffees if you can. Um, Starbucks is, I think, is fucking poison. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. Um, I've been to a lot of coffee shops that are more drip coffee, organic beans, and you can tell the difference in the taste. It, it, it's undeniable that, Star I think Starbucks puts something in their coffee to make it addictive, because every time I drive by one, I kind of get the shakes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that's because I, I used to drink Starbucks all the time. Um, but it's because I really, I think coffee is one of the best antioxidant uh, pre-workouts. It's a great supplement. It really helps ramp up your, but again, the other thing is I wouldn't drink a lot of coffee past like 2 or 3 p.m. Because it can affect your sleep. So try to do it before noon. Um, if you are doing it as a pre-workout, I, I do drink coffee in the afternoon, but I also don't have a ton of crazy effects from it. Some people are really super sensitive and yeah, Tim, tea, tea's okay. Um, I, I always suggest to people that don't like coffee, um, green tea is a, is a good substitute for that. So, uh, you can even buy green tea extract if you're not, you know, into drinking like liquids, but the other thing too is coffee doesn't dehydrate you as much as people think it does. You know, you might only be getting about 75% of the actual water intake when you drink coffee um, because coffee is slightly diuretic, but it's not as large of a diuretic as you think it is. So understanding that with coffee or tea, you're actually getting more water too, which is really, really important, you guys. You all know from following me that water intake is probably number one when it comes to trying to lose weight. So. With that, you guys, uh, I appreciate your time today. Again, this is Joshua Zitting from joshuazittingfit.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.